It's Monday night, and we got two games for you today. Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Buffalo Bills. The Cincinnati Bengals versus the Washington Commanders. We're expecting fantasy points to be scored today and in bunches, but you guys already have your lineup set. Let me know what you need in your lineup from your players that you're starting to win your matchup, how many points, who it is, whatever, in the comments below. But today we're going over the must starts, the sneaky starts, the guys we got to bench, the guys we got to send to the moon right now from these two matchups. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button because we're going to be going hot and heavy on the waiver wire right after these games. We're talking about the top players, the deep players, we're doing deep dives, and then later in the week, we're going to use these videos to help you set your lineups. Click that button. Stop missing out. We're starting off with Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Buffalo Bills. We got a 46 over under. And these guys played each other three times since 2018. The last time was last year in 2023. And it was 20 to 25. So we got 45 points scored in that matchup. And the Jacksonville Jaguars can traditionally run the ball on them in their last three contests. However, the games are pretty spread out. So honestly, we're looking at recent games to get the projections from that. But we got a 46 over under from Vegas. The spread has the Bills up by five and a half points. They are the home dogs in this matchup. Last year, Jacksonville was at home when they played the Bills. So we might see a little different outcome considering the Jacksonville Jaguars are used to playing in the heat. But now they get to go up to Buffalo and get to play in the cool a little bit. When you're looking at Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen here, more than likely if you're rolling into Monday with either of them at quarterback, you're probably just starting them, especially Josh Allen. Trevor Lawrence, you probably waited to the middle rounds and drafted him with the hopes that this would be a fast-paced offense and they push the ball downfield a little bit more. Now you got to start him because you probably don't have anybody else to choose from. But looking at the running backs for the Buffalo Bills, Going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are a little bit below average when it comes to allowing fantasy points to running backs. Devin A. Chen went off against them in week one. The Browns were a little bit slower last week. We saw Deonta Foreman and both Jerome Ford get touches. But James Cook has been rolling. Last week, 28.5 fantasy points to the Dolphins. 13.3 versus the Arizona Cardinals. The Buffalo Bills want to run the football. They have the last two games. They want to use Cook in space. They're going to try and do so. The Jacksonville Jaguars have been okay against the run, about average against the run. But we will see how the Bills can push the pace with the run game. And if they can't, then they're probably going to have to push it to the wide receivers. We do not have a wide receiver with 10 targets on this team. Eight is the most. That is Khalil Shakur. He looks like to be the go-to guy in this offense. But Keon Coleman's another guy to look for for the downfield play, the air yards. And due to that, he's probably going to be an off and on play for the whole year. So he's not really trustable. And we're looking at Khalil Shakir. More than likely, he's going to lead the team in targets in this matchup. He is also an upside play due to Josh Allen throwing the rock. He has good continuity with Josh Allen. Keon Coleman, more of an upside gamble. Don't forget about Curtis Samuel. And then also Dalton Kincaid. He has been off this year, but most tight ends have been off this year and Jacksonville Jaguars are averaging 1.2 fantasy points to tight ends so again Kincaid's really going to hit it in stride over the middle the volume may be there in this matchup if things get weird if the Bills can't run the ball on the Jaguars if the Jaguars slow down the run game the Bills will have to revert to the passing game if the Jaguars can get up early the Bills will have to revert to the passing game, which means we might see more Dalton Kincaid and maybe more Keon Coleman. If not, it's going to be run heavy and maybe Khalil Shakir gets his volume and that's probably going to be about it for the Buffalo Bills. That being said, you're home for Jacksonville to really push the game script. So Josh Allen has to throw the ball to Kincaid here. Get it over the middle. Get it downfield to Keon Coleman. Really pushing the game script here. Going over to looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars side. Travis Etienne looks like he's in an okay matchup. 
The Bills have been bend but not break to the running backs, averaging 21.5 points per game to running backs. James Conner got a little bit of fantasy points. Devin Achen went off last week, so there's potential for Travis Etienne. He's been all right. He's been a steady RB2 this season against Miami and Cleveland. Last year, he reeled off multiple RB1 weeks. We could see him get back to that this week. Last year, he scored 36.5 PPR fantasy points against the Buffalo Bills in Week 5. We might get back to that this week. Now we're looking at the wide receivers. The Bills have been kind of weird against wide receivers, but they've also been in some weird game scripts where they got ahead or the game script was a little bit slow. Week one against Arizona, they were playing from behind. They only had a couple pass attempts and Arizona did not have to really push it, but they funneled the ball to Greg Dorch. It was not going downfield to Marvin Harrison Jr. So when you look at Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr., that could be an indicator that things might be tougher down the field for them, and it might be more of a Christian Kirk matchup for them. Jalen Waddle as well was able to get something done with Miami, but that was just a weird game script. Considering these are two weird game scripts, we need a bigger sample on the Buffalo Bills to really get a good idea what this defense is about and what they're doing with fantasy production to these positions. But Brian Thomas Jr. gets the deep ball. He's been steady the last two weeks with that. So he could bring one in. Make him a little bit risky this matchup. But he's also showing some consistency. Christian Kirk has not been hitting. But he could get some volume over the middle. Especially if the game script goes to where the Jacksonville Jaguars needs to throw the ball. Gabe Davis is always getting targets downfield. That is his MO. He's got 10 targets on the season. Leading the Jacksonville Jaguars. But if they got to go underneath, then it might be Christian Kirk and it might be Brenton Strange getting it done there. Brenton Strange is running more routes, getting more opportunity. So he might get some opportunity to score fantasy points here. Scored 9.5 fantasy points last week. Nothing tremendous, but good for the tight end spot. Him versus Kincaid, it's really a coin flip right now. They're both going to run routes. They're both going to get an opportunity. Really, it's who gets it in the end zone. And if any of them will get it in the end zone. The Bills are averaging 5.2 fantasy points to tight ends on the season. A little bit better than league average. Trey McBride, Jonu Smith scored a little bit of fantasy points against them over the season. But still, Brenton Strange, the one thing you say, he's going to run a lot of routes. Probably going to be in about 75% of the routes. So there will be opportunity there. We'll see some targets. We just got to cash in. But if the Jaguars can push the game script with the Bills, the Bills will have to push back with the passing game. We might get some fireworks, and we got to hope for that. We got to hope for Travis Etienne to really go off in this matchup. We got to really hope that the Jaguars can keep the chains moving here and that the Bills have to push it through the air. If not, it's going to be another slow game script here, and a lot of guys in this matchup won't hit for fantasy and if that happens you're looking at like James Cook and maybe one other guy on the Jaguars offense which isn't that great and both quarterbacks not getting the job done for you guys so you really gotta hope that the Jacksonville Jaguars is able to push the game script in this matchup we're going back to the Bengals and Commanders we got a 46 and a half over under and these two teams do not play each other much last time they played against each other was in 2020 and it was 20 to 9 so you can't really go off those numbers but Vegas is saying this is going to be a moderate matchup you can definitely see the Bengals going ham through the air against the Washington Commanders maybe some Jamar Chase maybe some T Higgins you can definitely see that happening and maybe that gives some pushback for the Washington Commanders to get some more points or more yardage totals in the second half of the game but both quarterbacks are very glorious in this matchup. Joe Burrow is going to be able to sling the rock in this matchup. And we're looking at Jane Daniels. He's going to give you some rushing production. So if you got him, you're probably starting him unless you got two quarterbacks that are very good. And we're looking at the Washington Commanders. And Bengals are average against the run. Ramondre Stevenson went off on them a little bit in week one. Isaiah Pacheco was okay with 11.1 fantasy points. He also got hurt in that game. But look for Brian Robinson to get work up the gut. And if the Bengals get up, which they probably will, Austin Eckler is going to catch check downs in the back half of the game and might be able to score you some fantasy points with the yards after the catch. 
but Terry McLaurin has not been looking good this season. Uh, looking very similar to last year where there was a lot of wide receiver three games. The Bengals have been locked down the wide receivers. And Rashi Rice was able to score last week, but the Patriots do not have a passing game. You don't really have a large enough sample, but they've been good against wide receivers. Can Terry McLaurin catch that deep ball? Can they do that? Or is one of the other wide receivers just going to get those ancillary targets? Can you start Terry McLaurin? More than likely, you funneled your lineups to where you're not starting Terry McLaurin. But he is a big gamble. It could happen in this matchup if the game script gets pushed. But you're looking at Zach Ertz getting targets over the middle. The Bengals are moderate against tight ends. They're about league average, a little less than that. But Zach Ertz is running a lot of routes. He's scoring fancy points, scored 10.2 last week. So look for him to run routes and get targets in this matchup. That could lead to opportunities for points. But on the Bengals side, I expect the Bengals to be up in this matchup. And I expect Zach Moss to get it in the end zone, get some opportunity. And now you're looking at Chase Brown. He's going to be a flash in the pain. If he can hit on those few carries and get you some yards after contact, pop in the open field... He could hit for you in fantasy football. The odds are with Zach Moss, and I think we all know that due to the touches. But these running backs could roll in this game if the Bengals get up high enough in this contest. And you're looking at the wide receivers. I think this is a good matchup for all of them. Of course, Jamar Chase. T. Higgins coming back from the injury. A lot of people are leering on that. But if he's going to hit, it's going to be a matchup like this. He gets deep targets. He's going to get a 17-20% to 20 target share, if not more. He was looking very good in training camp. Had a connection with Burrow. If you want Yoshi as a deep play in a deeper league, maybe if you want to, if you're hurting a wide receiver. But you know that going in because all the games have been played except for these two going in today. But we're looking at this mainly for confirmation bias here. Chase, Higgins, I think they're going to be very good to go in this matchup. Now you're looking at Mike Gusecki. Again, the Commanders have been good against tight ends, but they also went against the Giants who did not throw the ball to the tight end last week. So it was mainly the Malik Neighbors show who went off, which could be an indicator that Jamar Chase goes off this week. Since last week, the Giants' awful wide receiver went off against them, but Mike Gusecki has been getting a lot of targets. He's been getting a lot of opportunity, running a lot of routes getting work in the end zone. I look for him to give you something this week. If not, the workload's going to be there. We got a good matchup. He's a good bet to make this week for scoring fantasy points. But that is the matchups for Monday. Those are the must-starts, the sits, the whatevers that you got to do right now. Let me know what you need in the comments below from your Monday nighters. Those guys are starting. What do you need right now from your players? Because you're already locked into your lineups. But I'm pretty much giving your confirmation bias. It's all right here, though. Let me know what you need. I want to hear what players need to score for you and how much. Drop that below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.